Hey everyone, it's Shermzy again, and in this video it's all about guard pointing and part of my series of charge blade guides and speedrunner secrets. I'm a charge blade speedrunner and in this guide I'll be sharing my advice and supporting it with some personal testing and basic maths with the intention for you to play as optimally as possible with my favorite weapon. First off, I will explain what is guard pointing and why do you need to learn it. Then I will go through the benefits in detail, including the relationship between the three main skills which impact guard points, which is focus, guard, and offensive guard. Then I will show you how to practice the five core guard point movesets in the training area. And for each one, I will share when and why you would use these, and also back these up by showing practical examples in various hunts. For a lot of these guard points, you can use them in different combinations or situations, and in my practical examples, you will see most of them. This guide is intended for all level of players where even the most advanced players may learn a thing or two, so stay tuned. I will finish off with a conclusion and give my best advice for all levels of players in how to best improve your guard point skill for beginners to the game, for experienced players, but beginners to the CB, for intermediate players, and even advanced players, so you can work your way to be a true master of the CB. It's time. Right, in a few words, what is guard pointing with the charge blade, and why is it mandatory to learn? Guard pointing is a high risk, high reward mechanic, which is both a powerful defensive and the only counter attacking or parrying maneuver, all in one move. When a guard point is performed, you are able to react fairly instantaneously with nearly any moveset in the charge blade arsenal, as if your character is standing still, with the added benefit of instant hopping, shield charge, charging savage axe, and the more popular reasons your direct execution to AEDs and SAEDs, which aren't usually possible without additional combos. Guard points also allow you to guard and counter all monster roars, which is always a free damage opening, but be mindful to position yourself towards the monster's head or their mouth, and not too close or underneath since some monsters are more unforgiving and can leave you in the most vulnerable state with your axe sticking out. Guard points also do a little KO damage if close enough to the monster, thus also do flinches, trips, and KOs. Normal blocking does no damage whatsoever. Beginners may assume when trying the charge blade is that it feels a slow and very clunky weapon, but that's why guard points exist, to counter this misconception. And unfortunately, you need to be very patient with this weapon and invest the time to learn all the mechanics of this weapon to truly start enjoying the benefits of this weapon style. Guard pointing is one of probably the primary reason to why it's widely regarded as one of the most technical weapons to learn. My goal with this guide is to make you feel more comfortable and confident when using the CB. And keep this video as a saved playlist so you can reference it anytime. Plus, I'll have uh, timestamps in the description of the video so you can refer to whatever section you need after we're finished. If you have any questions, please comment below and I'll always respond to them as best as possible or the community will help out. When using the most versatile of guard points, which we'll get through in a bit, it allows you to react immediately after every sword and shield moveset, which typically have very slow weapon animations and leaves your character vulnerable, plus it can extend the frames of other guard points. This leads us to why the focus skill is helpful to guard points, which isn't a direct effect but indirectly makes you the more proactive and mobile CB hunter. The focus skill is activated by equipping your charger decorations or fo focus charm for a maximum of 3 levels and this increases how quickly you can charge your files 
and more importantly for our guide, it increases your sword and shield animations by up to 20%, thus allows you to maybe guard faster or squeeze an extra or stronger attack before you follow up with a guard point, which without focus may not be possible. This is why it's my recommendation 3 levels of focus is mandatory, and because you're more mobile, it makes you more defensively and offensively efficient. Plus you charge your files substantially quicker, which synergizes immensely with this benefit. I have to be honest and say I do have speedruns without using any focus, but please note my script in these speedruns don't require focus where it would only be a luxury, thus there's no other reason why you shouldn't run it, since this is the only exceptional circumstances I wouldn't use focus. Now, let's move on to the offensive guard skill which is triggered by equipping the Guardian Decorations, or Charm, for a maximum of 3 levels. This is the most efficient skill to increase the damage you do with very little investment compared to stacking critical boost and affinity affecting decorations. This for me is also a mandatory skill in most builds, where 3 levels of Offensive Guard will increase your base attack damage stat by 15%, and this affects the physical damage and your impact files where for elemental charge blades, it affects only your physical attacks, which is still valuable since it contributes to trip damage and with a charge sword, KO damage. Bear in mind, not every guard point will activate or proc with offensive guard skill equipped, since it only procs the instant your shield is out or the start of the guard point animation. Different guard points has different amount of frames that will activate the guard point, and for the longer frames, if you connect towards the final frames, it will act as a guard point, but not enable offensive guard. Also, not every offensive guard proc is a guard point, since all you need to do to activate this is by guarding just as you're about to receive an attack. So normal guarding counts, and for those just learning guard points, I recommend it's still valuable and mandatory for good blocking practice. Once it's procced, it will last for 12 seconds, but this timer resets with each proc you do. My advice is to try and force the proc as much as possible, but don't overdo it since sharpness management is even more important, and the loss of white sharpness to blue sharpness is practically the same difference as the increase of level 2 offensive guard. So for impact charred blades, I highly recommend builds utilizing the Master's Touch set bonus or Teostra's technique from the Safi Awakened abilities. Just to give you an idea of how ridiculously powerful this 15% attack stat increase is, let's review some of these screenshots I took after some testing. If you compare the first two screenshots on the left, you can see there's a flat increase of plus 176 attack. That is the equivalent to 15% increase from my Hunter's base attack stat with the CB and its augments I have equipped. You can see that Offensive Guard is more powerful than the combination of level 7 attack boost and propped level 5 agitator, and only slightly beaten when also eating for attack large. The next slide is a continuation of the last, and you can see the impact of item buffs and the same flat increase of 176 attack from Offensive Guard across the board. You can, also, you, you can always pause and refer to these screenshots if you want a quick snapshot of the effects of the different attack buffs. So I'll move on since I've just proven Offensive Guard is the most powerful attacking boosting skill after the combination of critical and affinity boosting skills. Last but not least, we got the Guard skill, which is triggered by equipping the Iron Wall Decoration or the Guard Charm for a maximum of 5 levels. When you increase your guard skill, you're decreasing the potential knockback you receive, the damage taken, the stamina drain effect, and the loss of sharpness. These are an incredible amount of benefits in just one skill, but the most important of all is decreasing the knockback you can receive when you're planning to play optimally. There are three levels of knockbacks, small, medium, and large. Small knockbacks are when you block normally, or guard point and your character is practically holding their ground in a similar position. Medium knockbacks are when you block or guard point and it pushes your hunter slightly backwards thus taking more time before you can react or counter. Large knockbacks are when you block or guard point and it completely pushes your character back a large distance and you're locked in a recovery animation for a considerable amount of time and worst of all you can't react until the animation is finished. 
large knockbacks generally mean you're losing considerably more sharpness, damage, and stamina, which you must avoid and this is the game telling you that you need to consider raising your guard skill for that particular monster, especially if it's from a core move or move sets. There's three ways to increase your guard skill. The easiest and permanent for the entire fight is equipping more iron wall decorations or equipping the guard charm for a maximum 5 levels. The other two options is charging your shield so it's glowing in the top left of your screen and or guard pointing, guard pointing which are both hidden increases since the game doesn't tell you this. When you have a charged shield you automatically increase your guard skill by two levels and this remains so whenever it's charged. So if you have one iron wall deco equipped and have a charged shield then you have a total of three levels of guard until you run out of, of charged shield. So as a priority always make sure you have a charged shield in the entire hunt since the benefits are just too great. Anytime you guard point you also gain another plus two levels of guard however for that blocked moment only. So let's take a look at this table I produced which is focusing on knockback consequences and in my opinion reducing knockback is the greatest benefit when increasing your guard skill since depending on the monster it allows you to react or counter most if not all blocked attacks or roars with guard points and avoid being locked in large knockback animations. Guard skill is capped at level 5 by equipment but in actual fact you can reach up to a hidden, hidden guard level 9. This can only be achieved by having a combination of guard level 5 equipped, having a charged shield, and guard pointing an attack or roar at a given time. In terms of knockback, if your total ever adds up to an even number, then essentially you share the same knockback as one level less of guard. So my recommendation is to only ever equip 1, 3 or 5 levels of guard. The game has a hidden fixed knockback value for every enemy attack or roar and this value ranges from 0 to 100. As you increase your guard skill in whatever way is discussed, you lower the fixed knockback value to a lower threshold and the best case scenario is to lower a large knockback to either medium or small knockbacks. I'm only sharing very basic knowledge of knockback values and I don't think it's necessary to get into more detail about this. But if you have any questions so far about anything, please comment below and also let me know what you think about the information so far. Either it's too much, too little or whatever. It's time! Let's get started with the guard point tutorial and I'll show you how to practice all the 5 core guard points in the training area. The 5 core guard points are Weapon Sheath to Unsheath, Sliding Slash, Spinning Slash, Sword to Axe, and the new Charged Axe, which is also how you enable Savage Axe mode. The first one I want to talk about is guard pointing from a Weapon Sheath position. All you need to do when you're ready to guard point is press right trigger for Xbox or R2 for PS4 as you're about to get hit or as the monster roars. You can practice this by picking up some stones and shooting it at the barrel and get ready to guard point as it's about to blow up. There are a few practical reasons you may want to use this guard point. One is to rush the monster and open with a snappy guard point counter. Another reason is you may be busy healing, sharpening or consuming an item and the monster decides to turn to you so you need to quickly guard or counter it. Another reason is you may be greedy like me in the guiding lands and want to pick up every shiny possible and the best way to protect yourself is to use this guard point. The last reason is you may have just been pinned and this automatically makes your character sheath their weapon so as you get up you can react quickly to follow up with the guard point and either counter or then roll away since this is the safest method opposed to rolling away ASAP which can kill you depending on the RNG. Up next I want to talk about the sliding slash guard point and this is extremely situational. To generally perform the sliding slash you need to follow it up after any sword or shield moveset or hop by holding down a direction and press B for Xbox or circle for PS4 and you will slide towards that direction. But once you start the sliding animation you can hold an inward direction to turn your character a further 90 degrees. Practical examples is to increase or close the distance from your target and prepare for either uh, AED or SAD so you're better positioned for optimum damage. 
I typically use sliding slash to evade attacks and then turn my character towards the monster so if it does attack, I may perform a guard point to both protect myself and counter if needs be. It's only fair to now touch the spinning slash guard point and its 10 variants since a sliding slash does actually share a similar animation. Five of these variants come from the sword and shield movesets and the first one is your basic YYY combo or triangle triangle triangle. Then you got charge slash followed by spinning slash which is hold B, release, then Y or hold circle, release, then triangle. Then it's your charging shield combo which can be performed a few ways but the general idea is going for an SAED then quickly pressing either right trigger or R2 right after the last combo. So it's Y, YB, YB, right trigger or triangle, triangle circle, triangle circle, R2. After any hop move, you, when you press Y or triangle, you'll also perform a spinning slash and you can repeat this multiple times. Check out my other guide on how to continuously hop multiple times until your stamina drains. The last sword and shield spinning slash guard point is by charging your files, then press Y and Y, or triangle and triangle. This is uh, probably going to be your second most used guard point, uh, the spinning slash guard points. And practical examples when to use these are when you feel you can add a spinning slash for extra damage and benefit from a guard point. Also, the charging shield combo is a mandatory charge blade moveset, and because of the long combo, you gain the benefit of a guard point finishing move, so try and face the monster when you need to do this. The next 5 spinning slash variants are animations transforming from axe to sword form. Basically every move with the axe out can be transformed to sword, which is a guard point, simply by pressing right trigger or R2 after the axe hit. AEDs and SADs are exceptions to this rule. You can perform a guard point after your sword to axe transformation, your axe to dash slam, after spinning your axe, after your axe uppercut, and after your axe overhead slash. Practical examples when you use this is to do high damage with the axe and when you feel you've done enough damage before the monster reacts, transform to sword mode and increase your mobility and guard point. Don't ever run around with your axe out, unless you've mastered rolling iframes and can anticipate all the monster moves. Now, for the most versatile and what will be your most commonly used guard point, which is the sword to axe transformation. To perform this correctly, you need to wait for the attack to hit you, and in very quick succession, hold your shield out with right trigger or R2, and immediately follow it up with Y or triangle. Remember not to just hold your shield out and then press Y or triangle, since this doesn't proc offensive guard and is not considered a guard point. You have to perform this as you're about to block an attack or roar. It's the most versatile because it's the only guard point which can be performed immediately whilst in sword and shield mode and after any of its movesets, plus rolls and hops. It can also be used to extend guard point frames of all variants of the spinning slash, and that's including sliding slash. Because it can be performed after any sword and shield moveset, can be used to speed up the time it takes to recover from typical slow animations that the CB possesses, but of course only when an opportunity for blocking arises, so work on your positioning to intentionally take a guard point, but watch your sharpness. Last but definitely not least is what I call the Charged Axe Guard Point. This is a new guard point added into Iceborne, and it's the same move necessary to transform your axe to Savage Axe mode. There are a few ways to activate this, but it's the same principle when you're about to do either an SAD or AD. Thus has the added benefit to cancel your SADs or ADs so no files are consumed. So the generic examples are your traditional SADs, Y, YB, YB, left trigger, or for PlayStation, triangle, triangle circle, triangle circle, L2. And for AED cancels, it's 
Y, YB, YB, down Y, left trigger. Or for PlayStation, triangle, triangle circle, triangle circle, down triangle, L2. You can also perform this after any guard point and great to counter fast hitting multiple attacks. This is the most advanced guard point in my opinion when performed intentionally since for the first time you're now able to start performing your most devastating attacks in advance but cancel it if needs be, thus increasing your hunter's mobility and reaction with the weapon. Practical examples are when you feel there's a possibility to either perform an AD or SAD but then quickly realize there's an attack coming up. Uh, you quickly cancel those moves and guard point instead. The same reason applies for transforming to Savage Axe mode. So instead of just going through the motion of comboing into Savage Axe mode away from the monster and hoping RNG Jesus doesn't punish you, focus on the monster and see if you need to guard point instead of transforming into the Savage Axe. Since you have a little control in the speed as you're doing the SAD combo and can time when you need to guard point or transform to Savage Axe. It's time for our conclusion, and thank you so much to everyone who has stayed with me to the end. It's critical to understand all the decoration skills, build set bonuses, and mechanics that contribute to guard pointing like a master. And when this is properly understood, you will value the importance and necessity to motivate yourself to effectively learn this incredibly satisfying skill, which I hope I've done. If you want to improve yourself on certain guard points within this guide, I would recommend you practice them briefly in the training room as you log in. As a rule of thumb, three successions of whatever you want to practice is a good sign to start hunting. Then when you go into your hunts, intentionally tell yourself to practice that specific guard point and try to anticipate the monster's move before you perform that guard point. You can actually quickly save this video in a playlist of your choice by clicking the save button which is typically located above the subscribe button on both mobile and PC, so you can always have quick access to this for reference and use the timestamps in the description. For new players to the game and beginners with the CB, I would recommend running at least one level of offensive guard, as soon as you're able to, and at least one level of guard. Get into the practice of understanding your shield is your greatest defense, and practice timing your blocks as you get hit, instead of just holding your shield out, so you can learn how to proc offensive guard. Then with experience, you can use that knowledge to be more offensive as well as defensive. When you're initially learning how to proc offensive guard from just normal blocks, remember to increase the amount of guard skill you need if you ever receive large knockbacks, because this is the game telling you you need more guard, or hurry up and learn how to guard point. For experienced players but beginners with the CB, I would strongly recommend practicing against low rank monsters with easily anticipated movesets such as Diablos since you won't get too punished with the MR gear you have and these fights will go by real quick. The guard point you need to first be comfortable with is the most versatile one, Sword to Axe, since this is the bread and butter of all guard points. Avoid moving on to any others until you're fairly comfortable with this. For intermediate players, I would practice on faster moving monsters but still easy to anticipate either in low rank or master rank, such as any of the elders in low rank and for master rank, consider Gold Rathian or Teostra. Just make sure you have maximum health boost since your priority is learning, not speedrunning, and you're expected to make mistakes since the fundamental of guard pointing is high risk, high reward. These monsters will get you into the practice of motivating yourself to anticipate your monster, which is a very important skill for any weapon user in the game. For advanced charge blade users, I would recommend practicing on all the fastest moving monsters such as Nargakuga with elemental SAED playstyle, then Tigrex and Brute Tigrex for Savage Axe playstyle, to the point you think these monsters are an absolute joke and pose no threat whatsoever, since these monsters will teach you when to guard point and how to quickly react with either a strong or weak counter or repositioning, since a split second wrong decision will cost you. The best elder to learn is Tempered Nergigante, since it's very fast moving but, but in all honesty very easy to anticipate once you learn its movesets. This is also the best monster in my opinion to practice the new charged axe guard point, tempered or not. Just remember, every monster in this game has a set number of moves they can perform after a certain attack. Also whether or not they are agitated, which is rage mode, will also affect the type of moves they can follow up with. 
If you're prepared for the possibilities of the next move, you can better position yourself to anticipate and counter with the most optimum play. If you really care about pushing yourself to anticipate the monster, solo the monster multiple times first and challenge yourself using as much of the guard points properly. Since your mentality by this point shouldn't be how or when to guard point, it's how can I effectively keep my offensive guard propped at the best opportunity so I can dish out maximum damage for the 12 seconds I have and make sure sharpness management is at its optimum. So focus primarily on weak spots. Also consider putting your palico in standby mode and the only purpose to this is so the monster is 100% focused on you and this will accelerate your learning to anticipate the monster's move. My interpretation of advanced players are ones who will care about DPS builds, dishing out as much damage as possible and naturally finishing the fight as quickly as possible. The priority is always not karting, so if you feel safer with maximum health boost, go for it. But that should be the limit to your defensive skills. As a reminder, I do speedruns, and since the latest update, all of my speedruns are one of the fastest in the world, so please check them out if you want to practically learn how we use guard points and all the CB mechanics to its maximum efficiency. I hope this has been a helpful guide, and if you enjoyed the content and or valued my advice, please hit that like button. And if you learn anything new and want to see more content from me, please support me by hitting that subscribe button. I have to thank all my subscribers for all the great support and inspiring me to create more guides and content. Please leave me a comment below, either a question or general feedback. Tell me what you think I did well or what videos you would like to see from me. And if you have any constructive criticism, please share. Right guys, it's definitely time. Take it easy and happy hunting.